Amen. We thank God for being here this morning. Let's give God a hand praise this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God for blessing us to come to the house of the Lord once again. We thank God for the prayer on this morning. I say that all the time because I thank God for prayer, whether at home, in my car, here at the church with other believers. I thank God for prayer because that's where I find my strength is in prayer. The Bible said men ought to always pray. That's men and women. All of us should always pray and not faint. And so the Lord is letting us know if we don't pray, we're going to faint. But in praying, God strengthens us. He helps us. He gives us what we need. And I thank God for prayer. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. And so we're not going to prolong the time this morning. We thank God for all of those who are listening this morning. Amen. We thank God for you being with us. As I've said uh, other times, I just appreciate you taking out the time to hear the word of God, to be tuned in to our services. We thank God for you because you could be doing anything, but you're taking out the time. But let me say, share this with you. Your time that you're giving to God, it is not in vain. Anytime you acknowledge God first and you give God of your time, God will bless you, and I have learned that, and I'm continuing to learn that when you put God first in all that you do, God will continue to do great and mighty things for you, and he will show himself strong. We thank God for how God has been blessing our services. We thank God for Sunday morning, amen, the 11 o'clock uh, a.m. service, how God came in and how he blessed our service. Uh, some of our saints was able to be with us. We yet doing social distance, and we have a number that we uh, stand with. But that number was uh, pretty much here on Sunday. We can only take in so many, but we thank God for the number that was here uh, on Sunday, and we had a great time in the Lord. And so we just thank God for all that He's doing as we enter and back into some of our services. So we're going to hear the Word of God this morning. We thank God for morning manna. Uh, those who have been listening to us know that we're in a series right now, The Power of Waiting on God. There is power in waiting on God. Amen. And so we just thank God. We're just continuing uh, this series. And we, I'm speaking at times. We have others speaking. And I thank God for what we've been hearing. And not only we're hearing it, but we're doing it. Amen. I hope we're doing it. Amen. I know I'm trying to do what I hear because that's what the Bible said not to be hearers only, but to be doers of God's word so we can receive the blessings of God. And so we thank God for Elder Scotty Welch, who's with us on this morning, and I will say no more. We will hear what the Lord is saying. It's not him that's speaking. God's using him as a vessel this morning, but it's God that's speaking. So therefore, let us hear, let us hear what God is saying from his word and not allow it to slip from us, but to remember God's word and to walk out God's word that we may be blessed in him. So we're going to ask Ella Welch to come and allow God to speak to you on this morning. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. And oh, how I love Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. We thank God this morning again for allowing us to come and to share. Uh, for those of you that are watching uh, by way of technology, uh, for those even here assembled in uh, First Church of God in Christ, we, we love the Lord, yet we love you too. And a uh, uh, few things I want to look at this morning that I believe will encourage us uh, in our work of faith and labor of love. Uh, still keeping 
with the theme, the power of waiting on the Lord, but I'm going to use some different verses this morning. Uh, but yet, you'll see when I'm through, we're yet headed down that road. Uh, I'm going to use, first of all, the first one is in Romans 12 and 7. Uh, you'll find that, Romans 12 and 7. Uh, and while you're looking for that, uh, sub-theme this morning is waiting on our ministry. The uh, uh, Bible says, with all that getting, get an understanding. And I believe we would function better, no matter what our individual call is, if we would learn the power of waiting on our ministry and then why God wants us to wait. Romans 12 and 7 says, Our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching. And then you don't have to turn to this. James 1 and 19 says, Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So not only do I need to learn to wait, but I need to be swift to hear. Not swift to say something, but swift to hear. Because if I'm swift to hear, then what I say will be sound. And in the timing of God. But but a few days, a few years rather, four decades to be exact, uh, that I've walked with the Lord and responded to this call, uh, I've come to understand some things uh, that are really sometimes misunderstood or misnomer in the kingdom of God in the body of Christ. We, most of us uh, are from the school of thought that when Paul the Apostle uh, was blinded by the light in Acts chapter 9 and fell from his beast, shortly after that he just took off preaching. Uh, but that's not so. Uh, and really, the ministry is much like uh, stew in a crock pot. And I'll get, to, I'll get to Paul in a minute. Because what God does, you know, crockpots cook, but they cook slow. And so once you get the peas and the carrots and the potatoes and the onions and the corn, and then if you're like me, I, I use dried onion soup. Uh, and then I put uh, some chopped beef, tip, beef tips in there. and But you got to let it cook slow. And then I add... Uh, either tomato juice or tomato sauce and a little salt and just a little, just a pinch of sugar. And, and then, but then you got to let them, you got you to let it cook slow because all of those ingredients work together to make that taste like it should. And if you cook it too fast, it won't come out right. Uh, another one comes to mind, and then I go to Paul. Uh, the ministry is really like uh, baking a pound cake. Uh, and once you put the flour and the sugar and the eggs, beat them up real good, put them in the bowl, and then add a little vanilla flavoring. Uh, you preheat the oven, stir the batter up real good, and then pour it in a bunt pan. You put that in the oven. Now... That cake has everything in it to become a cake. But it must be put in the oven. Now, mind you, the oven is hot. Let me, let me say that again. The oven is hot, but it takes heat to blend and mesh all those ingredients together so they work together so that when it finally comes out, it's a cake. But now there's a process called rising. Because my mother, I, I remember my mother didn't know anything about Duncan Hines or Betty Crockett. Every, everything, mom was country girl. Everything she made was from scratch. And uh, uh, my middle brother uh, used to watch it. I, I was up, I was too busy reading books. I, that, that was my hobby. Just, I just loved to read. But I remember one time she made a, she made a cake, a pound cake, and I, it was smelling so good I ran my, our bedroom was upstairs. I ran from upstairs to downstairs, and I was headed toward the oven to pull it open. 
And my brother, my middle brother said, Scotty, don't do that. I, I said, man, why? I said, it's smelling so good. He said, but you're going to get us all in trouble if you open it now. He said, because the cake will fall. Now, I'm, I'm puzzled because it's smelling good, Teresa. It, it smells like it, it's time, uh, Mr. McPherson, uh, to get the, to get the uh, uh, ice cream out the freezer and uh, get my scooper and uh, cut me a nice warm slice, put that ice cream on it, and get to work. But I discovered there's a process called rising. And see, the heat, when it's applied right and the, amount of, and the right amount of heat, it will cause that cake to rise. Yet if I open the oven too soon, it'll fall. And I'm, I'm, I'm mighty concerned that many a, many a young man or woman of God has come out the oven too soon. Well, what are you saying? Well, again, I said we're going to look at uh, just something, a uh, school of thought going around about Paul the Apostle. Now, we understand in Acts chapter 9, we understand that uh, he was on his way to Jerusalem, licensed by blasters to king, to hell men, men and women, lock him up in prison, for proclaiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible says, and, but suddenly a light shone around about him from heaven, knocked him from his beast, and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And then shortly after that, you all know the story, God had dealt with Ananias, and said, Ananias, I want you to go uh, to Simon's house, uh, and I inquire of one named Saul. Lay your hand on him that he might receive his sight. And you know, Simon said, Lord, you understand, holy Jesus. Now, I really I love you. I really do I, with all my heart. Uh, but, Lord, you're asking me to put my life on the line because uh, we've heard by many of this man as if uh, you, have, you need to bring the Lord up to date, <laughs> as if he doesn't see all and know all. And so he, sp he spoke right through it. He said, yes, uh, Ananias, but behold, he prayed. Huh? He, he didn't address any of, any of the other. He said, Ananias, behold, he prayed. Now, when one prays, he's not just flapping his gums. He's not, he's just not coming trying to exercise uh, his, his jawbones and strengthen his muscles in his faith. No, he's communing with God. So when he was praying, that was enough. Ananias laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, even the Lord Jesus, whom you saw by the way that blinded you, sent me to lay hands on you that you might receive your sight. You know, the text said, and immediately scales fell off. And yet we think, so then right then, he just took off running, uh, testifying of the goodness of God. But I want to submit to you this morning, and, and this formula is not for everybody. I'm just saying learn to wait on God and, 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 and flow in his time. Nothing wrong with wanting to speak for the Lord. Nothing, want to, nothing wrong with wanting to testify of his goodness. But don't, don't go out so quick uh, that your soup ain't done. Don't, don't, don't move so quickly that your cake falls. Because... What God has to do is cook in us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Huh? That's why he says, for we know all things work together for the good of them that love God. Uh, there are some streets I went, I've, I've walked down uh, before I knew the Lord and even, even after a little bit that I'm even ashamed to talk about. But God uses them as a platform for ministry. So that folk will understand we may fall down, but we can still get up. So now, let, let, let's, look at, let's look at Paul now. Because we think, uh, Elder Crowley, that, that, uh, that as soon as them scales fell off, he took off running. But oh no, no. In, in Galatians, <laughs> in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15, uh, it, it, it tells us that there was some time, which is really interesting, because for, for years I thought that uh, he just took off. I mean, you know, because he had a lot to say. He was a learned man. But even as, as a learned man, 
He learned to prepare and wait on his ministry. Look at Galatians chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 15, read a few verses, and then jump over to Galatians 2 chapter 1. Galatians 1 and 15 says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went where? To Arabia, to the desert, and returned again to Damascus. Now, when he went to Arabia, he didn't go there for a retreat or for a couple of weeks. Look, verse 18 tells us, Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So he first went in the desert, sought God for three years, to, to, to solidify his call. He went, now you do understand, in the desert is what? Hot. <laughs> uh, the desert is a dry place. Why? So his cake would rise. So that when the oven of ministry opened, it wouldn't fall. Now, go over to Galatians 2 and 1. We already saw three years. Verse 18 says he went to Arabia for three years. But now look at this, Galatians 2 and 1. Then, 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. So we have the span of 17 years before he even said a word. Huh? He's, he's calling Acts 9, but you got to, you got, that's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. He didn't just say read. See, you can't just read to show yourself approved because there's some depth in it when you study, when you dig in. And, 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 and as you dig in, you glean uh, a better level of understanding as why God wants you to wait. Now, God's not being punitive. Uh, I, I understand zeal. Every every young preacher, male or female, every young missionary uh, wants to say it. I, I, I got something burning. Well, and that's true. But, but, but let the ingredients cook well so that when you stand up and the enemy assaults you, you can deal, you can handle the pressure. Because, see, there are pressures in ministry. You, 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 there are times you're going to get lied on there are times when folk would travel, would send a rumor around and spread it and then later have to take back what they said because what they heard was not you. But you still got to love them. If they lied on Jesus and he said, if they've done this in a green tree, what will they do in the dry? They lied on me, they're going to lie on you. If they misunderstood me, they'll misunderstand you. And so we must learn, like Paul the Apostle, to wait on our ministry, but yet not, not just Paul. Uh, I'm reminded now, paid boy from heaven, just stop by. I'm reminded now of David. David in 1 Samuel 16 is anointed by Samuel. Uh, the Lord said, you know the story, go down to Jesse's house, for I've anointed me a king above, uh, among his sons. Three oldest sons, Samuel had them pass by, I said, surely uh, this is the Lord's anointed. The text said the Lord hadn't chosen any of these. And so after three of them passed by, and then all of his sons, he had eight boys, seven of them passed by, the Lord didn't choose any of them, he said, Jesse, do you have any more sons besides these? He said, yes, I have uh, my youngest son, uh, the baby boy. He wasn't like Tyrese Gibson, the baby boy. But he's my youngest son, but he's feeding the sheep. Fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes hither. Bible says, because you understand, over all them sons, he held a flask of oil, but it wouldn't flow. It wouldn't pour out. When he got to David, 
He picked that flask up, and that oil just began to run down. So, he, so God affirmed and confirmed that at a young age, he called David. And yet again, David had to go in the oven. Huh? Am I right about it? Uh, in order for his, him to be successful in what God called him to do. See, it's one thing. Uh, I used to think that I'm helping God. <laughs> huh? Because he called me to preach. Now I can help him. No, God don't need any help. He wants to help you and bless you to bless others. And so David's ready, but it ain't time yet. And so, and, and, and he's about, historians say, between 14 and 16 when, when the oil was poured on his head. Then shortly thereafter, about three years passed, then this giant comes. And his, his father, Jesse, said, son, uh, take these uh, ten loaves of bread and blocks of cheese down to your brothers in the valley of Sukkot and see how they fare in the war. David goes down and sees them confronted by Corona. <laughs> After making it relevant. <laughs> he goes down and sees them running from this giant problem that has crippled everybody, crippled their mind, crippled their hearts. Huh? Now, mind you again, he's still about now to reach, he ain't but 17, but he, so he's still young. But he understands we have a covenant with God. See, our, God did not just save us to to so we could give him our sins. See, he saved us. Really, sin really is a byproduct. His salvation for us is redemption or, re or restoration. He wanted to restore to us all that the devil stole from us through Adam because God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That's why Jesus said, I'm come to give you life and life more abundantly. And so you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to, have, to, to experience life and living. Psalm 27, 13, David speaking, I had fainted, except I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land of the living. And so, so David sees them, and he's puzzled because they're shaking like Don Knotts in the ghost of Mrs. Muir. Knees knocking, teeth clacking, afraid, afraid running. They're gripped and paralyzed by fear because Corona has breathed and threatened them. He said, why are you all afraid of this giant? The God we serve. Yes, he's big. Yes, he's, his size will blind you if you look at his size, but our God is bigger than him. And that same God that brought us to this point, he didn't bring us to it to kill us, he brought us to it to take us through it. God didn't bring us to Corona <laughs> or this COVID season for, for Corona to wipe us out. Elder Crowley testified the other day, a lady, 98 years old, recovered from, from Corona, and really, the truth be told, there have, there have been more that have recovered after being afflicted by it than those that have died from it. But now, David is confronted by his brother and says, no, you can't fight him. You, you, you too young. You, 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 hold it. Go back and, and, and teach that little Sunday school class, you know, where you got four students. Go, you, go, get, some, go get some learning and wisdom. He said, no, no. God said, having done all to stand, stand, and that giant's going to fall today, and I'm going to feed his head to the fowls of the air. Brothers couldn't persuade him to run. And then Saul, the king, said the same thing. The young man, I appreciate your, your zeal. I appreciate your, your fervor and your excitement. But you you still uh, drinking Prosopi and Similac. You, you still on formula. You still wet behind the ears. Don't, don't, you're going to get us all killed. He still couldn't persuade him to stop. 
So the Bible says Saul girded David with his armor. Listen to this. Now, if that armor was potent, if it had potential, if it was valid, why didn't Saul use it? Because there, there are many that perpetrate. They, they want to be deep. But test, when test time comes, you, you'll find out who has a connection with God and, who, and others of us just talking. Saul wanted to be deep. He wanted to appear because he was the king. That he had it all together, but he didn't. And so he girded him with his armor. He put it on. He said, I, no, no disrespect, sir. I, I, I haven't proved these. And the Bible says he pulled it off, but he got down on his knees with his shepherd's bag and pulled, pulled five smooth stones out of the brook. Why, why, why five? I, I, know I, this is the, I know this is a devotion, but, but can I take my time? And just at least, at least explain why, why five, not 11, not nine, five. Uh, see, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And so he's drawing a parallel between the fivefold ministry that is outlined or expressed in Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets. Some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saint and for the work of the ministry. That's why it was five. But we don't know which one he used, but we know he stood in faith. Goliath laughing at him, talking about him, uh, said, I'm on, I'm on, I'm, you, you dying today, young man. This is your last uh, time. I'm warning you. Go home. He said, oh, no, no, I don't know. You're the one going home. And, and I'm going to feed your head this day to the fowls of the air. Y'all know the story by faith. He stood up, whirled that swing shot, hurled a rock into the giant's head right in the middle of his forehead, and boom, down he fell. And then he had what really blessed me, Mr. McPherson, he had no sword in his hand. He, he run up on the giant, took the giant's sword, cut his head off with his own sword. But he still is not king. In my conclusion, finally, after getting going in the oven, after going through trials and tests, and, and leaders envious of his gift, now, let me say this emphatically. If you know who you are in the Lord, there's no reason, no valid reason, for you to envy anybody else's gift. Because we all have our own peculiar gifts, some more than one. After this man, one after this man, and another after that. Yet I've seen many, why she let her, why, why he let us sing my song? Well, no, it's not your song, because we're all singing for him. So, so it can't be yours. If, if we're all here to glorify him, he went through envy, went through jealousy, went through trials in heaven. But from 17 to 30, he was not crowned king in Hebron over Judah until he was 30. That's 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. Because it takes time. And we must learn to wait on our ministry. Now, in my conclusion, I want you to understand, whatever you want to say for the Lord, God wants you to say it more than you even want to say it. But he wants you to prepare yourself. That's why he says study to show yourself approved under God. You don't need the approval of men. God will confirm what he's called you to do through men. But the Lord is the one that called. I, I, I rejoiced, and in, in Elder Crowley said when they told him he was going to pass the first church, he said, oh, no, no, because he had something else in mind. But because God does the calling and then confirms it, he settled it in his spirit. Because you, have, you do understand there's more to pastoring than just preaching. 
Huh? See, the nuts and bolts of pastoring, you got to keep sheep in courage. You got to believe in them when they don't believe in themselves. Huh? And so you got to stay built up so when you get up, you won't, be, you won't beat up the saints. Let me say let me say it again in my conclusion. I don't ever want to make folk glad twice. Glad when I got up and then glad when I sat down. Because I didn't take the time to edify or build myself up and wind up beating them up. This word is not a whipping uh, stick. Paul said when we speak it, we ought to declare it in love. It'll cut regardless. But when I speak it in love, it'll cut and heal It'll cut and have salve at the same time. Huh? Proverbs says this, and I'm done. There is that speak it like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is helped. Even with a rebuking word, God's ultimate is to knock you down and pick you right back up. It's not to knock you down, show you how small you are. Huh? I'm through with this. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift thee. Now, you don't understand. Peter had a whole lot of zeal. Many times got ahead of God because he wouldn't stay in the oven long enough. But Peter said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as a sifter sifted wheat. But I prayed for you that after you are converted, you can strengthen the brethren. Because you remember, Jesus finally says, okay, brethren, I've spent three years with you showing you really what ministry is about and why I came and the price of ministry and that you're going to be hated by some folk even in the house of God. But it's time for me to go away because if I go away, the comforter won't come. But when I go away, I'm going to send you another comforter but the scripture says when the shepherd is smitten the sheep gonna scatter Peter said Lord hold it hold it hold it Jesus now it, it, it's 12 of us uh, but I got the deepest revelation uh, Bartholomew and Thomas Matthew James and John all of them gonna run but Lord I will not go anywhere I'll follow you even under death and that's when Jesus said hold it hold it Peter, hold it. Uh, brother, I know you mean well. But Satan has desired to sift you as a sifter sifted wheat. And even now, you wrote a check you can't cash because you're too young in the Lord. But after you're converted, you can strengthen the brethren. Y'all know the story. When he betrayed the Lord the third time, he went out and wept bitterly because it broke his heart because he loved the Lord. And he meant well, even when he said it. But my point is, he had to learn to wait on his ministry. And matter of fact, historians tell us Peter was so broken after Pentecost fully came that he was crucified upside down. Because he loved the Lord and he learned the importance of waiting on his ministry. So brothers and sisters, this morning, study. Show yourself approved unto God. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and let God release you. And then, these are for my brothers that may be watching my Facebook. Don't be so quick to go uh, preach for an honorarium. Put as much time in it when there ain't but four in the house as you would when there are 4,000 in the house because you're being tried but when you try it, thank you, Lord, we'll come forth as pure gold. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God bless you this morning. Amen. Let's give God praise, those that are listening this morning. Give God praise where you are right now for that word on this morning. Amen. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on your ministry, waiting on your ministry is so important. So we thank God for being here uh, this morning. We thank God for the word of God that we heard on this morning.
And is it so important to wait on your ministry? And we're not going to come behind the uh, minister this morning. He spoke the word of God, and we want it to penetrate your heart. We want you to be able to digest God's word. And go back over this over and over. And go back, even if you're listening now, we ask that you go back and listen to it again over and over. Because this was very important, what he shared with us on this morning. Many ministers, many missionaries, many teachers, many of those who have been called of God. God did call, but we went before our time. And if you go before your time, then you're not going to be as effective as God wants you to be. And so I thank God for that word on this morning. I waited on my ministry, and I'm still waiting on other things that God want to do in the ministry. But I don't want to do those things until God say it's time. And therefore, we have to wait. So we thank God for God's word. We're going to pray for you this morning, Lord. We just thank you for the word of God that came forth on this morning, God. Oh, God, you told us to wait on our ministry. Oh, God, whatever you've given us to do, God, to hear from you to receive instructions from you. Lord, you said in your word in all our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. So God, we cannot do nothing without you, oh God. And Lord, you've given us the zeal that we have, God, but you told us to have zeal according to knowledge. There's nothing wrong with having it, God, but it has to be according to knowledge. And we have to wait so we know how to use the zeal that you have given us, God, and we'll learn how to walk it. Oh, God, how to go before the people, oh God, and be a blessing, oh God. So, Lord, we thank you for the word that came, oh God. You first want to establish us, oh God. You want us to teach us how to live holy and how to walk up right before you, oh God. That when, when we do minister, God, that our life will confirm our ministry by the life that we live. So, God, we thank you for your word that came forth on this morning. Lord, we ask that you wash us, that you cleanse us, that you make us whole and complete in you. That we can minister to others, oh God, oh your word, oh God, and that it will be affected in their lives. So God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. We thank God for being with you on today. And again, we say to you, wait on your ministry. Don't go before God, but let God go before you. And we thank you for all that God is doing for you. And God will continue to do great and mighty things for you as you wait on him. God bless you.